Well, anybody that knows me knows that I'm picky and I'm stubborn. And through a lot of trial and error and a lot of headaches, it's apparent that I don't like to do anything the easy way. Let's build a custom radiator. For the better part of the last few weeks, or dare I say months, I've been familiarizing myself with Fusion 360 and learning the ins and outs of CAD. A daunting task to say the least coming from knowing absolutely nothing about this workflow, but you know, here we are. I designed a few mounting brackets that you see me installing here that I attached to the existing mounting holes that are already in the Z. I initially printed this with my Bamboo X1 carbon printer for mock-up purposes. Now if you've seen my previous episode, you'll know that I got this radiator from CSF's catalog and it's originally intended for a Mazda Miata NB, but after some measurements, luck would have it that it just ever so fits inside the constraints of the engine bay. I know the common thing here to do is to buy the Champion radiator that you'll see most other Z owners running, but I wanted something just a little bit more unique. I designed a custom shroud for this radiator in Fusion 360, and then I had the guys over at Sen Cut Sen make it for me. I have got to say, what a killer company. They offer so many different services from laser cutting, bending, anodizing, powder coating. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Needless to say, I have a ton of projects that I want to incorporate in the future that I'll be using Sen Cut Sen for. If you guys find yourself in need of your own custom parts, check the link in my description. It is a custom link that Sin Cut Sin provided me, and if you use it, I do get a little bit of kickback, and it helps the build progress. So now that we're all caught up with where I was last week, let's try to figure out why we're a week late on this video, because somebody likes to do things wrong in Fusion. Let's see why. So if you can tell, there is four brackets on the top and two on the bottom on the left side. There's four on the top, two on the bottom on the wrong side. Somebody decided that it was a good idea to bend things in the wrong direction. And so, yeah, I had to order this shroud twice, but we now have the correct one. And that's what we're gonna do for the rest of the day. We're gonna install this radiator we're gonna get our two spall fans hooked up, matched up to the shroud, and get it installed and show you guys what a custom CSF Mazda Miata radiator setup looks like inside of a Datsun. All right, first things first, we're gonna get the incorrect, incorrect shroud out of the way and get the correct one over here. So, this is the correct shroud, the one I should have ordered the first time. And we'll take a look at this. As you can see, my bolt holes actually line up this time with where they're supposed to be. And the only thing that I left out of the design is I did not put the four holes for mounting the fans in because I wasn't exactly sure which orientation. So. If any of you guys do want this setup and this shroud, it will come the same way. You will have to drill your own holes to put small fans inside of it or put whatever fans you want inside of it. But I left it like that so there was no hiccups. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. We're gonna get these holes drilled. I'm gonna shim them so they don't touch this outside piece. And yeah, we're gonna get these fans installed. Let's get the radiator out of the way for a moment. All right, so these are not direct mount um, fans that go to this radiator. These are flat mount, I think is what Spall likes to call them. So the way that they go in is they sit flat against the shroud that you put them in versus attaching them to the radiator. Now, even though you guys are watching a ton of B-roll of me putting this thing together and it looks relatively easy, we did have some troubles along the way. I ordered hardware from McMaster Car to pair with this radiator, specifically rib nuts, but I had trouble getting them installed with the tool that I had. So I ended up switching over to some bolts and nuts that seemed to work just fine. You 
You've probably heard me say this a few times at this point, but I designed this shroud to work around these spall fans that I bought. These are PWM fans, and for those of you that do not know what that means, it essentially means that these fans are not a two wire and instead are a four. I can modulate how much power I get from each fan with the help of my Haltech ECU that we're going to be installing in the car in some future episode. The huge benefit behind these fans is that they can be power modulated. What's the benefit you may ask? Well, your typical two wire setup delivers a ton of inrush current, but with these, I can choose how much power I want from each fan just by telling it to operate at certain temperatures and at certain powers. After the few hiccups and maybe a few extra beers, we finally did get the shroud attached to the radiator and installed. I have to say, I never thought we'd be at a place where making something custom would be relatively this easy. So once again, thanks to the guys at Send Cut Send. I'll be the first to say, making custom stuff, not easy. So this project didn't go entirely according to plan. I had to drill out the rib nuts and put different hardware in it, which is not what I fully intended to do from the beginning, but regardless, it does work. So custom shroud, CSF radiator from a Mazda Miata, two brushless, spall fans i probably I'm not gonna lie to you guys i might change this up a little bit and <laughs> order this a third time because there is quite a bit of gap in here that is for the most part unnecessary so i can close this down some and i may take these sides out and kick them and then push them back further to the actual body but for now, we're gonna run this. It is installed. I will, once I get to wiring, wire up the fans, but for the most part, it does work. CSF radiator, spall fans, custom shroud. Well, I bet you guys didn't expect to see this project again so soon, but we finally did decide on a fuel level sender. I got the Holly electronic fuel sender, so we're gonna take the pump out, drill another hole in this thing to put an electronic fuel sender in here and install the tank for the final time and actually keep it there. So let's get the fuel hanger that I installed out of the tank. And one thing you guys will notice while I'm doing this is how literal easy this project is to replace your fuel pump if you need to. That's it. Now we're right back into the tank. So obviously I had to take the fuel hanger out so that I can drill another hole because I didn't want to have this installed while I do that. And obviously we're gonna do the same thing, clean up the tank a little bit get this installed. I might even pull the dash out and calibrate it to the fuel gauge that's in the dash. And yeah, that's what we're gonna do next. This will not be the last time you see me working on this fuel sender. We will have to add a connector in the future so that I can run it into the wiring harness.
this definitely will not be the last time you see this dash. I plan to have a more in-depth video in the future of me installing and running all the wires for these speed hut gauges that I have installed. If that's something you guys are interested in, drop me a comment below and let me know if that's something you guys want to see. Overall, getting this set up wasn't too crazy, but it definitely was a process. All right, it works. It is currently sitting at a half a tank and I'll show you. So as you can see, this is marked at the half tank mark. And the way I know is that it is at half a tank. So just to show you really quick, if I do move this back to what would be considered empty, let me get this set up just a little bit better. Empty, pointed at the block, you can see the gauge is indeed moving towards empty. So it is calibrated. We're done, finally. I am gonna get the table set back up with the tank and we're gonna put the sender and the pump back in the tank and that'll be the end of this project for the night. So let's get that done really quick. Call it a night. That was a hell of a day, but now it's finally complete guys. Radium fuel pump for Skyline, electronic fuel sender. Just gonna run this basically through here with the cables, run the plumbing this way. And this is a completed tank. That's it, I'm done for the night. We'll pick up the next project in the morning. See you guys then. On a quick note though, really quick. It's the next day, and look at this. The engine's basically kind of tore apart. We're pulling the engine back out. All the crap's pulled out of it, and you guys will figure out what that's all about in the next video. Mm -hmm.